All right, guys, so the next macromolecule that we're going to go over are proteins. And because we already know what monomers and polymers are, we're just going to jump straight into it. So the monomer for a protein is called an amino acid. And the most defining characteristic about amino acids is that there's 20 different kinds. You don't have to know what they are, but you do have to know that there's 20 different kinds, which means there's a lot of different combinations that you can connect together. Oops. The next one, the polymer, is a polypeptide. And a polypeptide, it basically has a linear structure. And so this is one amino acid. Why is it called a polypeptide? Well, we know that poly means many. And peptide is just the name of the bond between amino acids. So we call many peptide bonds polypeptide. You don't have to know that it's a peptide bond, but that's why we call it a polypeptide. So let's jump into the amino acid structure itself because there's a couple different parts to it. Oops, let me move this up. So the first one, the most simple straightforward one, you're always gonna have a carbon in the center with a hydrogen attached to it. That's always gonna be in the center. You're always gonna have this group right here called an amino group. It's a nitrogen and two hydrogens. And you're always going to have this group right here. It's called a carboxyl group. It's a carbon with two oxygens and a hydrogen. Now, here's where things get a little tricky. This is called the side chain. I know some of you are wondering back in one of the first activities that we did with macromolecules, you're like, what is this R? Now you get to know. This R represents what we call a side chain. And there's 20 different kinds of side chains. Therefore, there's 20 different kinds of amino acids. You don't have to know the structure of those side chains. You don't have to memorize them. All you got to know is that this R represents a side chain. There's 20 different kinds. And therefore, there's 20 different amino acids. So lastly, proteins function. Now, proteins, they do the most out of any macromolecule. It is a lot of things that they do. But the three main things that I want you to understand about protein functions is number one, they build large and small scale structure in our body. So on the small scale, an example would be an enzyme. And we'll talk about those later, but an enzyme is something that helps speed up a reaction. On the large scale, proteins make up our muscles. The second thing that proteins do, the second major thing they do, is they have bodily functions. So for example, um, when your body creates DNA, they assist in the making of DNA. There are certain proteins that help in that process. And we'll talk about that later too. And then the last major protein function is that they regulate the body's tissues and organs. So for example, in red blood cells, there's something called hemoglobin. And hemoglobin attaches to oxygen, and that allows it to carry blood throughout your body. So the three main functions of proteins are they, they create large and small scale structure in your body, they help in bodily functions, and they help in regulating the body's tissues and organs. Basically, proteins do a lot. And we're going to talk about a lot of the things that they do later on. But for now, that's all you got to know.